Welcome to your English news package with Radio N to Television Tonga for the hour. Making headlines, Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Penny Wong signed agreements with the government of Tonga. Despite COVID-19, Tonga High School is still going to celebrate their Diamond Jubilee anniversary tomorrow. And the Ministry of Health concerned about the increase of NCD-related death. Now with the news in details. Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister, Senator Penny Wong, signed agreements with the government of Tonga based on social and economic development following her arrival this morning. Senator Wong first made an audience with His Majesty, King Tobo VI, before the Prime Minister, Honorable Hogawa Meiligo, welcomed her at St. George Building for the signing and a press conference this afternoon. My phone Tupola was there and filed this report. While her time here in Tonga, Wong met with Prime Minister Honorable Hokkaido Liko. And Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Fekita Moiloa Utekamanu and signed cooperation documents on disaster prevention and mitigation, people's livelihoods, and other matters. Australia played a leading role in international response to January's volcanic eruption and tsunami in Tonga. And she looks forward to what can Australia help us with during this time of recovery. Wong told reporters this is her second visit to the Pacific since being sworn in as Foreign Affairs Minister nine days ago. She met the leaders of Tonga and discussed of how can the Australian government apply the new energy and resources that Australia are bringing to the Pacific. Senator Wong said that she understands that Tonga and Australia need to work together like never before for our peoples and for generations to come. Australia want to make a uniquely Australian contribution to help build a stronger Pacific family through social and economic opportunities including the pandemic recovery, health, development and infrastructure support, as well as through Australia's Pacific labour programs and permanent migration. Australia will increase their cooperation and contribution to regional security as they understand that the security of the Pacific is the responsibility of the Pacific family, of which Australia is a part of. They will stand with our Pacific family in addressing the existential threat of climate change, and Australia will deepen cultural and sporting ties. Meanwhile, Honourable Benny Wong will depart Tonga this afternoon. For radio and television Tonga News, from the Royal Palace from Nukalofa, I'm Bafunato Bola. COVID-19 did not stop Tong High School students, current and former, from celebrating the school's upcoming Diamond to Jubilee tomorrow. The school will hold a prayer service and plant a halala tree to mark the special occasion, even though the day will officially be celebrated next year. Mark Ake with the details. ex Tonga High School students were in their best outfits, consisting of the school's colors, maroon, yellow and grey, everywhere they went today, including to the workplace. Staff of the Bank of the Pacific, or BSP, were in Tonga High School uniforms to celebrate and showcase their excitement for the Diamond Jubilee. There will be a combined prayer service tomorrow for ex students with the Prime Minister, Honorable Huacaba Meiriku, as the guest of honor. The service will be led by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Reverend Lord Tuya Fitu, who graduated from the school in 1975. Tonga High School was founded in 1947, and two of the first students or pioneers of the school Tawajo Lady Tuna Filakepa and Kelepi Borivaati are still alive and well. The construction of the school's library was expected to be completed this year, however the January devastation caused a few setbacks, and so the completion has been rescheduled for next year. It's important that people are more aware of non-communicable disease or NCDs as the death rate as a result of this disease continues to rise in Tonga. Mark Aki again with more on this story. The Director of Health, Dr. Sialia Gawola, emphasized that Tonga is one of the highest number of NCD deaths and cases in the world. I wish to inform the public to be more cautious and aware of NCDs, as it is still the highest risk of death in Tonga. Approximately 700 people die in Tonga every year, and 75% of the 700 die because of NCDs. The concern is for people to have healthier food choices. If we look at it, it all comes back to what items and goods are sold at the stores and what are the cheapest. 
the WHO says that communities should provide cheaper health choices as people deem to only buy cheap food which is usually dangerous and unhealthy for them and causes NCDs. There are foods like chips which may be tastier but it isn't good for you. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Revenue and Custom is trying to decrease the tax on imported healthy food. There were 47 watermelon growers affected from the ash of the volcano or volcanic eruption rather, fortunate of an assistance from Nishi Trading and other related stakeholders. The watermelon that were planted and grown before the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai eruption were amongst the agriculture that were heavily affected by the ash fall in the aftermath. Local watermelon grower Kafoi Kalaudaimi says this assistance has received following a survey after the eruption. There were different assistances we were given forms to fill out on what we wanted, such as fertilizers, machinery for bushwork and seedlings. This assistance has been a relief for us who have lost so much from the general devastation. We were also given free water tanks and farming tools. This assistance was approximately worth 20,000 baanga per person. Laudai said that following the ash falls damage on watermelon plantations, many crowers were thinking of giving up. On the day of the devastation, I was out tending to my plantation, and I just ran to my house, and whatever number of watermelons was in my truck, that was all I was able to see. After the devastation, our watermelon plants were damaged and covered in ash, and this assistance has helped them to continue the growing of the fruit. Meanwhile, local watermelon growers are also trying their best to continue the shipping of their harvest overseas next month. Vaifonato Polo for Radio and Television Tonga News. Local vanilla plants are still safe from virus disease, unlike in countries abroad where the plant has been harmed by disease. This was confirmed from ongoing testing at the Plant Pathology Laboratory in Waini. The New Zealand Aid Program is supporting the Tonga Vanilla Project in carrying out this test in an attempt to identify the carburet or insects that are causing infecting vanilla plants with disease. It is understood that vanilla plants in many countries overseas continue to be infected and harmed unknown insects that carry viruses. Former Agriculture Officer and Vanilla Coordinator Sione Vangeli received ELISA reagents equipment from the Plant Food Research or PFR to help with the testing. Vanilla is a good source income not only for vanilla growers and their families but also for the economy. The CEO of Agriculture, Food and Forestry, Dr. Vilami Manu, says there is a small chance that this virus can harm vanilla beans, approximately not more than 10 beans out of 8,000 in a bush allotment won't be harmed. There is no limit to the amount of vanilla being exported, unlike watermelon and gava. This year we look at the prices of vanilla. It cost 300 US dollars per kilo in the United States, and converting it in the exchange rate, it will be 700 baanga per kilo. So far, only one company has been registered to sell vanilla beans this year. When they started weighing the vanilla beans, I heard it was 80 baanga, and it was funny after the ministry classified the first class from the second class and grade A from grade B, they are both at the same price as 80 paanga. We don't know why we have to classify them, but still they have the same price. Maybe it's because there aren't many. I'm encouraging vanilla farmers in Wawa'u, those who have many acres, to plant vanilla. Most vanilla grows well in Wawa'u and there are two types of it, which is the normal vanilla plant that we are used to seeing and the Dahitian ones. Right now there are no problems or harmful effects to the vanilla plants, but if this virus comes to Tonga, we are well prepared. New Zealand will offer scales to measure the ripe beans, but usually the vanilla growers know the time to harvest which is when the bottom part of the beans turns yellow, we encourage them to harvest when it is ready. 
Dr. William Imanu adds that he traveled to Vavao and inspected the vanilla farmer's work and he experienced that sometimes vanilla growers move and plant kawao when vanilla isn't ready. Some of the growers exported the vanilla beans to the U.S. in food containers. Tonga's water is still safe and secure from illegal fishing after Tonga Royal Navy's Guardian class patrol boat Ngahau Siliva completed the Pacific Forum Fishing Agency led operation to Imoana. The operation started on the 16th of May and was completed on the 27th as Tonga participated together with six Pacific countries and personnel from the Pacific Quad nations as Australia, New Zealand, France and the United States. The main purpose of this operation was focused on illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing or IUU across the region. The component commander of Tonga's Royal Navy, Holokau Kaulakai, says the patrol boats from seven countries who participated in Tuimoana's operation must remain in their waters and connect their operations from the headquarter of fisheries at Honiala Solomon Islands, or FFA, so that Australia, New Zealand, France and the United States support their work. The results of this operation saw no illegal fishing or unreported and unregulated fishing after the House River Patrol boats inspected fishing boats in Tongan waters. During the operation, the House River inspected five boats, which included reviewing their work and the resources they use for fishing, as well as making sure they abide by the Ministry of Fisheries guidelines. The combined area of operations of uh, participating members, exclusive economic zones and agent high seas pockets is approximately 6 million square kilometers. There were 20 crew members on board, the house deliver for the Duimoana's operation. Holokau I thanked every country in supporting this operation, especially Australia, New Zealand, France and the United States. Lakai hopes that problems while protecting Tongan waters won't be solved by one ministry, but through joint efforts with related stakeholders to better protect the Tongan sea border. And the Tonga Police Commissioner Shane McLennan with his executive yesterday presented Brigadier Lord Felakeba with a token of appreciation for his guidance as acting commissioner for Tonga Police in the past year. Brigadier Lord Felakeba was appointed as the acting commissioner of police by His Majesty in Privy Council following the departure of the former commissioner of police Stephen Caldwell in April last year. Brigadier Lord Felakepa acknowledged the Tonga Police Executive members for their assistance during his time as Acting Commissioner and expressed his gratitude towards the new Commissioner and the Tonga Police. As required by law, the Commissioner must be independent of any influence or interference, political or otherwise, in carrying out his duties and responsibilities. This is necessary to protect the rule of law in Tonga. And that concludes tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's one final look at tonight's top stories. Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister, Senator Penny Wong, signed agreements with the government of Tonga. Despite COVID-19, Tonga High School is still going to celebrate their Diamond Jubilee anniversary tomorrow. And the Ministry of Health concerned about the increase in NCD-related deaths. And that is for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Itabo. Have a blessed evening.